YouTube, what's good? Jermaine the Credit Fiend. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I uh, appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. If you've been denied credit, uh, although it may be, it can be frustrating, um, but it could also be a blessing in disguise. Okay, so for education purpose only, I, I wanna, I'm trying to enlighten people, you know, as far as <clears throat> we as the people, the real people, right? We're not talking about the politicians and definitely not talking about these corporations or whatever, right? Because, you know, thanks to those two parties, in my opinion, right? This, this country is getting screwed. We like getting screwed over big time. Let's be real. And um, it's like, as a, I don't know, as a citizen of this country, I feel like I gotta, you got to do something. We got to do something, right? Because it's just, to me, it's getting out of, out of hand. But if you've been denied credit, that means you applied for some type of credit, right? Doesn't or even insurance, right? We're gonna talk about that too. Insurance, and you've been denied, or or on something that's unfavorable to you as a consumer. For ex give an example, um, my friend, she um got it recently got an insurance quote, um, and went to another company, and it was higher you know, than it normally should be or higher than what she's paying right now. And so, although it's not, they didn't deny her coverage, so that's not really, you would think that it's not adverse action, but really it is, okay? And I'm going to show you guys that in black and white. But this can turn out to be a blessing because one, you can, you know, they have to give you the source of information. That's one thing. Two, that information, if it's inaccurate or incomplete or unable to be verified, right? And that consumer reporting agency or that source of information failed to modify, or if it's a consumer reporting agency, they only have two options, people. Modify or delete. Now, you know what I mean? That's it. Now, the the, the, sort, the furniture of information, if it's a furniture, meaning a creditor or whoever, they have three options under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. They can modify, they can delete, or they can permanently block, okay? But in this case right here, like in her case, is different. It's no permanent block nothing is either modify which they can't do because you know what i mean it's a an accident that was not submitted through her insurance company by her right um and she wasn't even at fault so the information and it's incomplete as well i mean they, they got incomplete information on this accident it's an accident that was reported but no information on it so it did impact the decision that the insurance company um, far as their or premium, and so that is considered negative, with can you know negative information. So let's go to the Fair Credit Reporting Act here, Section Six Hundred Three K, Six Hundred Three K, or uh, for those who all who do the fifteen USC whatever, fifteen USC sixteen eighty one A, right? But but I I just like to do it by section. Um, adverse action, <clears throat> and what is overlooked in this part right here is when you go right here an action taken or determination that is right here, number one, made in connection with an application that was made by or a transaction that was initiated by any consumer or in connection with the review of an account under section 604, which is permissible purpose, by the way. Um, and then this part number two right here, adverse to the interest of the consumer, right? Because she doesn't have an, uh, a policy with the insurance company that reviewed her um, report, but so that's not really considered adverse action unless she was actually denied. She wasn't denied, but it is adverse action based on this information because it is adverse to the interest of her because the premium is higher. Now, you would think like this section right here, okay, clear, clear as day to cover adverse action, but that's not it. We're going to go over the section 615 right here. Now we're talking about the duties of users in this case would be that insurance company right taking adverse action on the basis of information contained in the consumer reports okay so again like i told her i know it's freaking her you know freaked her out pissed her off or whatever but we got to gather these reports it kind of pissed me off too because right? i was really hoping her you know those those other violations or whatever if we on on uh when we you know we got them deleted or whatever so it's 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 it kind of upsetting to see that they put a fresh accident on that report and made that premium go much higher right but this could be a like i explained to her a blessing it could be all right um well it kind of is because one 
Now that source, which is State Farm, got to give the source of information. In this case, LexisNexis um, clue report. Okay, um, and so now we can gather that information. She contacted her insurance company because it clearly says her insurance company, I guess, is the one that reported it. And come to find out, they were like, well, we don't even know why it's there. They told her it was going to get deleted. They were going to remove it. Now, we need that in writing, people. Dude, whenever you talk to someone on the phone and they say, hey, well, we're going to remove that, you need to request for that in writing. Don't just, I don't care if you record it or not, tell them that you would like to have that in writing, okay, that it will be removed. And the reason why you want to do that, right, um, is because now I can take that letter, like I explained to her. I can take that letter and now I can um submit that directly to Lexis Nexus Clue Report and try to speed up the process. Okay. Because now you got confirmation straight from the source saying they're gonna it's information gonna be removed. And that is an actual uh dispute code for consumer reporting agencies, right? Claim that company will remove. There you go. Company say they remove, please remove. And I don't have to wait for we don't have to wait for our insurance company to take 30 days. You see what I'm saying? To, to update that information. But let's say they don't update. Let's say Lexus Nexus, <clears throat> which they're known to do. Most consumer reporting agencies, we all know that you can give them, you can give them supporting evidence and they still won't do it. Well, if they violate, then they should compensate. Okay. And that's, that's what I meant by it could turn out to, to be a blessing. And uh, I'm very thankful for the, the small um, team that I have, um, you know, creating this channel and have my group and my members group and have a small team within that group or whatever that we are, you know, standing up and, and, and taking action. Um, you know, uh, we're not attorneys, you know, okay. Uh, we, but we do have attorneys on, on board. Um, and we got to gather our information from attorneys as far as what to do in that situation or whatever, to be able to provide that information directly to our clients and let them decide on which route they want to go. Do they want to do small claims? Do they want, you know, uh, let an attorney handle that? Um, and then we, you know, we assist them with that process. People, this is huge. Okay. It, it, it's time to stand up and it's time to, to, for your credit. Okay. Even if you know, man, I know I got a lot of accidents. I know I have a lot of speeding tickets. Listen, there's a difference between a driving record, <clears throat> which which is on your uh, driver's license, and a driving record report. It's the difference, okay? Driving record, we know is that's what the DMV. But most people are unaware that the DMV don't report information to any consumer reporting agency. It's an actual consumer reporting agency that report that that the insurance company gathered that information from. There are over 400 consumer reporting agencies, people. Okay, now that's for insurance. That's her case. But what about I'm applying for a vehicle? What about that? I got denied. The same thing, people. All right, they're gonna have to give you that source of information. Okay, let's just say, give you an example. Someone was denied for uh, what you call it, uh, recent collections. Okay, now here's the thing. Okay, you got that information. We can get a free copy of the credit report, right? Based on that information, based on the adverse, based on this right here, adverse action. We know that we can get a, a copy of that credit report now, right? So we got that information or we dispute it directly now. Start with the consumer reporting agencies. You dispute it with that, you dispute that information, that collection, um, whatever it is, where you say I'm unaware of the collection, or you disputed the balance, or you did not receive the um the validation of debt, notice of debt content, um, you know, whatever the case may be. But you have to go through the consumer reporting agencies first. Now, the consumer reporting agency. We expect verified is accurate, right? Comes back verified is accurate. Okay, so what does that mean though? When the when it comes back verified is accurate, and I can't stress this enough, people. Sometimes we have the advantage in front of us, but it's our the lack of knowledge of understanding of how what credit, you know, uh, um, the lack of understanding credit is what most people that have the advantage won't take action because they are unaware that they have the advantage. When you get that verified as accurate back, people, what that means is that whatever information that you disputed, let's just say you disputed and say, hmm, I'm unaware of this collection, right? Removed from my credit report or whatever, disputing under the FDCPA, okay? And it comes back verified as accurate. What that means is, is that collection agency now is telling the consumer reporting agencies, oh, no, Jermaine is aware of this collection. You see what I'm saying now? Right. We so when they make a claim like that, that I am aware of the collection, 
Oh, okay. Because I already said I'm unaware. They said I'm aware. <laughs> that's what it, that's what I see when I see verified is accurate. They're saying that I am aware of this collection. They're also saying because I disputed under the FDCPA. They're also saying that this this uh collection meets the requirement of the whole entire FDCPA. Oh, really? Right. So now I can do what? I can go directly to that debt collector. But what I've learned from attorneys, and I've you know, because I didn't used to do this now. I was just go straight for the debt collector, y'all. Now I'm doing, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna eat them up. But no, 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 Mona, me. We don't want to lose, even though that helped me, assist me with many deletions and stuff from clients and stuff that I worked on. There was a better way to do it. You see what I'm saying? And you have to be open mind to receive that information, no matter how. Oh, I'm good. I, I know credit. No matter how much you think you know, right? There's always room for improvement. So one of you know my team members who they you know i'm not the leader i said we all leaders my team man hey man this is what i got from the attorney how i do how the attorney say do it this is what you do you go back to the consumer reporting agency that's right you request for a reinvestigation of that disputed information okay and also um uh you know list you can list of you know of just throw a few more out there you know what i mean like things that you want to dispute with that account okay now it comes back verified as accurate again. Okay, that's it. That's it. You don't even have to go to the to the debt collector because if the consumer reporting agency, whose duty is it to assure maximum possible accuracy? The consumer reporting agency, correct? Okay, so now did the consumer reporting agency comply with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section Six Eleven A Five? Let's go here. Let's go. All right, we got we got work to do, people. We got too many people out here. We need to. We're trying to secure, you know, we're trying to secure homes. We're trying to get new vehicles. And but we can't do it because of information that's on our credit report. And this is only pertains to information that is inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified. People, you cannot dispute accurate information, right? But here's the thing, how you switch that up. How do you know if it's accurate or not? You know what I'm saying? Like a charge-off account. While I pull this up, a charge-off account that has a balance. Do you know without a doubt? I say without a doubt now. 100% sure that 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 balance is is accurate. Do you know? You don't know? Why you don't know? Because you cannot, you're unable to what? Verify. So instead of saying that it's incomplete, I mean inaccurate, I would say I am unable to verify the reported balance. You see how you switch that up? But let's go to section A, 611A five here a five treatment of clearly this is all consumer reporting agency okay so you, you disputed that collection now remember we say collection this is what that consumer reporting agency also known as the credit bureaus this is their duties right here treatment of una I mean, unaccurate inaccurate or unverifiable information clear as day without a doubt right that you can hold them to this people it says if after any reinvestigation okay remember you disputed the first time that's an investigation. And it's like, when you go back, that's why I'm like, oh, I was missing that. And I think my, my, um, man, he's a beast. <laughs> but I, um, I wasn't going back for the reinvestigation. I'm like, I, I don't have time to be playing around. I'm going straight for that debt collector to get it resolved. Booyah. But I was also missing out on funds, potential funds for my client. If they violate, they should compensate. Now, am I saying it's a big case? But no, but I'm pretty sure you not wrong with receiving a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars plus the deletion plus the, the debt zeroed out. You see how we're doing business now? We're not playing games with them. Check this out. If after any reinvestigation on the paragraph one of any information, it said any information disputed by a consumer, which we said, what? I'm unable to verify. I mean, I'm un unaware of this account and that collection. An item of the information is found to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified. Right, the consumer reporting agency shall number one promptly delete the item of information from the file of the consumer or modify the item of information as appropriate based on the results of the reinvestigation. Now, if it came back verified as accurate, did and we are we clearly let the consumer reporting agency know, hey, I said I am unable to verify this account, I am disputing under the FDCPA, right? That means and it came back verified as accurate. Now I went back to the to the consumer reporting agency. And say, listen, I still did not receive right um 
notification of debt contents, da da da, whatever you, you know, you throw it at them, add a couple more things, the balance is inaccurate and all that. And they still fail to do one of these two things here promptly delete or modify. I don't have to hit I don't have to hit the debt collector up. They helped me out. They already helped me out. This dispute right here helped me out. Why? Because one, that consumer reporting agency was required to do what? Take in consideration the information I submitted. Is it relevant information? Did I not submit relevant information? I say I'm unaware of this collection. I'm disputing under the FDCPA. That's relevant information, right? Um, but what are they supposed to do with that relevant information? Right here. They give prompt notice of dispute to furnisher of information. Furnisher, right? Now, most people would think a furnisher is just a creditor, like a bank or a financial institution. No, 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 more than me. No, no, no. The FCRA does not give a definition of furnisher, but that doesn't mean... Here we go. That doesn't mean that 12 CFR part um, 1022 doesn't. <laughs> that doesn't mean like here we go right here definitions 1022.41 right here furniture means an entity entity it didn't say bank it didn't say financial institution that furnishes information relating to consumers to one or more consumer reporting agencies for inclusion in a consumer report and, and, right you see that right so that would mean the debt collector <laughs> and what were they supposed to provide prompt notice and that the agency shall provide notification of the dispute to any person who provided any item of information dispute. And who was that? Well, the debt, the debt collector in this case, at the address and in the manner established with the person. So we know that's ACDV for those who know credit, automated consumer dispute verification. Okay, automated people, right? The notice shall include all relevant information regarding dispute that the agency has received from the consumer or reseller, right? In this case, a consumer. What was the relevant information? Okay. Did not um the FDCPA. That's the relevant information. And now on the back side, that's why I say it <laughs> it can be a turn out to be a blessing. And I'm not saying that things like this happen overnight, people. All right. I'm not saying that. Let me go ahead and control F and I do six six twenty three. Okay. So let me go here, section 623 here, and we're going to go get out of paragraph A. Even though when you dispute with the Bureau through the bureau, through the Consumer Reporting Agency, and that data furniture now is required to comply with this whole entire section, but we're going to put emphasis, we're going to get out of paragraph A, we're going to go to B here. We're going to go to B. You got to line to connect the dots with the, with the FCRA because it, it's, it's kind of like that. Um, if you don't know, you know how to connect sections and stuff, it can be lost. It can be challenging. Right here, we're going to go to B, duties of, of furnisher of information upon notice of dispute. Clearly, clear, without, don't have to go no further. It clearly says right here, this is a duty now. On the one B right here, review all relevant information provided by the consumer reporting agency, pursuant to section 611A2, which was right here, A2, right? So now, with that, I can now hold just those two disputes, I can now hold the consumer reporting agency and that debt collector to um, the Fair Credit Reporting Act because the debt collector right here, it clearly says if an item of information disputed by a cons consumer is found to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified after any reinvestigation on the paragraph one. Sound for me? Sounds like uh, same information here with the consumer reporting agency. If after any reinvestigation in the paragraph one of any, any information disputed by a consumer, an item of the information is found to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified, in this section is the consumer report, what the consumer reporting agency shall do in section 611, but section 623, right, is what the furnisher shall do, right? You see that? For purpose of reporting to a consumer reporting agency only, meaning this is not to get you out of paying what's old, or just reporting to information to a consumer reporting agency as appropriate. Based on the uh, results of the reinvestigation, promptly, they had three options, people. Modify the item of information, delete the item of information, or permanently block. But is that the only thing? No, because remember, now that data furniture, in this case, a collection agency, must comply with the entire, now that I did know, must comply with the entire section 623. Well, lo and behold, let's go to 623A2 here. 
let's go up to, let's go up to A2. We're going to talk about some more duties that they had. Duty to do what? They failed to do that too, huh? Last time I checked now, they said it's $1,000 per violation under the FCRA. Between 100 uh, and 1,000. So that don't mean you're going to get 1,000, right? Uh, if they violate people, they should they should compensate, right? <laughs> if they, that may be the money that you can use, whatever, to get the vehicle that you want, right? You see how all that works out? But you will not, people will lose the advantage <clears throat> because due to the lack of understanding, the lack of knowledge of how it works with credit, right? Again, I'm known for, I don't like dragging stuff out. You know what I mean? It, the, the quicker I can get my clients in on my books and off my books, the better. I don't do the whole dragging out loans. You're a client, you're going to pay me. And, you know, no, I have a flat, I had a flat rate anyway. All right. So no matter, my fastest time is two weeks, but my longest time is 10 months. I <laughs> tell people that. All right. So, you know, it's case by case, but it also depends on the client too. If you're not ready to, like right now, if anyone will ask me to help them, with their credit, I'm like, if you're not willing to sue, right, then I'm not the person that you need to talk to. You probably need to get with someone who want to go around, you know, four, five, six. We should not go past round three. Round three with a with a bureau, it, we should not go past that. It's time to take action. It's time to take action. Speak to a consumer um, protection attorney that specializes in, let's say, the issues with a debt collector, that specializes in suing debt collectors or specializing in suing the consumer reporting agencies, specializing in suing banks or whatever. You know what I mean? It's when you can get attorneys like that, they could, you know, help you out. But some cases, not every case is probably, you know, worth it because in some cases you hear, it seemed like the consumer got a lot of money on the lawsuit, but the attorney fees took almost all of it, right? Court, you know, so the consumer really didn't, probably would have got more had it just going handling themselves going through small claims. Again, I'm not offering any kind of legal advice or financial advice. It's case by case. Um, but I just say this right here, it's time to fight back, people. It's time to stand up for your credit. Okay? It's your credit report. The information on your report is what dictates what you can get approved for, what you can't get approved for, interest rates, all that. Right? We, You are in charge of your own credit um, report or situation or whatever. And like we say in the army, when in charge, you take charge. Okay. It's time to do that. And this is not no, no shady stuff and trying to no illegal stuff. Again, if it's accurate people, if it's complete, if it's verifiable, if they comply with the procedures of the FCRA, which is the fair credit reporting act, <clears throat> excuse me, the fair credit reporting act or the FDCPA, the fair debt collection practice act, you see what I'm saying? Hey, at the end of the day, it's integrity, okay? You got to find out, you know, you, you, you got to handle it because this is not about getting out of paying what, what is owed, but it is, my thing is about procedures, okay? It's all about procedures. So I just want to share this information and say, hey, look, you may have been denied credit, right? But when to the untrained eye, it's just like, man, I just got denied credit. But to the trained eye, they're like, yeah, you got denied credit, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I I smell violations. I smell you know mixed with a little bit of a little little bit of uh, pin ads, right? Funds, monetary relief, and that's not saying money hungry. It's just that's the equivalency. If they violate the law, or whatever your consumer um, rights, um, then they must compensate. They should compensate. That's the way it should be in this country. All right, this is Jermaine and Credit Fiance. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video. Um, but yeah, let's do it. If you are past if you've been disputing for a while, I'm going to be bold on this one right here. Even though I got like 200 something emails to go through, I'm going to be bold on this one. If you've been disputing for a while, and like what I mean by that, like I'm on round four, you're on round four, five, six. Some people out there say they're on round nine, right? Contact me. Okay. It's definitely time for someone else to look at that situation, your situation. And it could be another way to resolve the issue or whatever. Let's work together. Okay. Um, no tearing each other down. Let's work together. There's no promises or guarantees that and I'm saying I can get help you get nothing deleted. I don't want no one come on talking to me and thinking that I got this magic sauce to get things deleted from a credit report. <laughs> I don't. All right. I just follow procedures and stuff. That's what it's all about. But contact me. My email is in the description. Um, please explain your situation when you do, because I don't really have time to 
you know, hey, Jermaine, you know, how you doing? And then I'm right back. Yeah, I'm doing well, you know, <laughs> like a regular con Drop it on me. Like, explain your situation, whatever, in the email. Make it as long as you want or whatever. Um, well, not say long as you want. <laughs> Make <laughs> Let's get with uh, specifics or whatever. How long you've been disputing? What's the situation or whatever? And let's see if um, we can work together. And um, maybe I can. Maybe I can. Someone on my team can provide information that can help you out or whatever. Better assist you. How about that? All right? I think that's fair. No, again, no promises or guarantees, but it's up to you all. I thank you guys for taking the time to check this video and watch this video if you made it all the way this far. I am uh, now thanks thanks for the encouraging words from my fellow fellow veterans and supporters or whatever of veterans on um, that last video I made um, about being attacked or whatever. And, you know, my character, my reputation is impacting my channel. You know, family being you know threatened. You know, well, it was a threat made to me about my family, but my children but i appreciate it and i'm doing just what you guys said i'm, I'm gonna put trying to push through it so i appreciate that all right iron sharpens iron one team one fight and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace